All right, this is our next episode of True Wrestling Fans Discussions, considering the Dark Side of the Ring series. This is going to be covering Luna Vashon. I'm your host, Mike. I'm Frank. Man, let's get into this. This was a, a sad one. Yeah. Well, most of them um, are. What? Most of them are, unfortunately. Well, yeah. I mean, especially when, when they get to somebody you knew, especially during the time that you loved wrestling during the Attitude Era. I mean, I wasn't quite on the Luna fan base pretty much i wasn't on board with her but i mean i i thought the stuff that she did was entertaining a lot of the stuff i didn't know behind the scenes like most of us didn't oh yeah i had no idea um i knew she was part of the famous uh, bashan family because they had they had actually used um mad dog Mm bashan in a skit at one point i remember that and so took his leg um, off right yeah i was sick (laughs) you can't do that now but um yeah, I wasn't on I, I wasn't on board with her, but I again I liked her antics. I liked this kind of the, some of the stuff she did in the ring and, and some of the stuff they came out with tonight kind of I thought was like a pretty dick move on Vince's part. I'll get to that um in a little bit. Um they started off uh interviewing her son, uh Van Hurd. Um he said that she um they, they talked about the one time he showed up at her elementary school, he had a she had a snake. Yeah. Uh, with her, which kind of scared the, the crap out of him, which is the type of girl she was. Um, they quickly then go into the interview with pretty much for, for most of this was Gangrel mm-hmm. or his real name, David Heath, uh, former husband of Luna. Um, he said he met Luna for the first time at Florida Championship Wrestling Show. Um, she kicked the door in and, and yelled, fresh me. Yeah. And yeah. if I keep if I try to do that voice many more times, I this, I'm not gonna have no, it. Oh I, my god, I, I couldn't do it. Uh, he said that he was scared to death of her. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, I can see why. You know. Yeah. You know, the, the chick psycho, or at least coming off that way. Uh, but they did eventually become friends. Uh, so which is good. Her real name, this I didn't know either, was Gertrude. Yeah. Now I can see why she wants to be called Luna. Yeah. Um, or the other names, as if they referred to her as um the vashans were uh, wrestling royalty in canada and another thing that i had i knew this back at then but i was reminded now that she was actually adopted by the family right i had remembered this uh, years back uh, probably around the attitude era and i had just forgotten this until now um so then you know, this is, by the way, uh, this is the first one where we didn't have a Jim Cornette or a Chris Jericho. It felt very soothing, by the way. And that's not to have Cornette on it, just saying. It's have corny, yeah. So we go to Mick Foley, um, who's talking about how Luna's un- uh, uncle was uh, Maurice Mad Dog Vachon. Her aunt was Vivian Vachon. Mm-hmm. And her father was Paul Butcher Vachon. And I had seen some of his stuff from the 70s, and he's, he lived up to his nickname. And he, they, they were both good wrestlers. Uh, I wasn't too familiar with her work. No. Um, when, I don't know if you were. I, no, I, I wasn't. I, I, wasn't. I, I hadn't heard of him. So they interviewed her father, her stepfather, I guess you could say, Paul Vachon. Uh, he talked about the tragedy uh, December 18, 1966. Uh, they were at a mo- uh, he was at a motel. He hears a gunshot, li- lifts his head up. Nothing, just uh, what it goes back to sleep. <laughs> Um, the next morning, there's a knock on the door. The woman, or now we knew later, the widow, said that the man that owns the hotel shot himself. And um, at that point now, he had met her four-year-old daughter, yeah, who, who happened to be Luna. And so then he married the widow. So now Luna, or Gertrude, has, been, has now married into the family. It's an interesting way to meet your wife. Seriously, man. It's like, my husband just shot my, shot himself. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Hey, uh, you get busy so tomorrow. You want to go out for breakfast? <laughs> <laughs> you want to go out for breakfast? <laughs> hey man. <laughs> well, I mean, the funeral's Friday. What are you doing Saturday? Right. Uh, it's just it, it's uh. it's totally like ridiculous. Uh, but it, but it worked. But whatever. Um, the one thing Luna had stated is they had some pre-recorded stuff from her in yeah, this they- was. She wanted to be like her Aunt Vivian. Mm-hmm. Now, after finding out what Aunt Vivian would do to her, why would you want to be like Aunt Vivian? I don't know. Um, the family tried to talk her out of the business, I guess, because especially because of a female's perspective uh, aspect of the business back then, it just it wasn't there as much. Um, so then the next person they had uh, interviewed was uh, Janine uh, 
Miosith. I said that wrong. My apologies. Uh, she was a professional wrestler known, mm-hmm. known as Mad Maxine. Yeah. Um, this this um, she was like I think one of the first ones that got the Mohawk. Or uh, yeah, they showed it with them. Yeah, I thought it was it, it looked all right. She was a protege of the fabulous Moolah. Yeah. Well, here we now, go. Now, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thank thank God Moolah's not around because you know Peacock or anybody can't tarnish her now for oh, all of this. Man, Lord, Lord. None of the Moolah stories are good that come out, man. No, and uh, I think I think it was uh, Janine had that had said everybody's got a Moolah story. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can only wish that we could have heard these at some point. I mean, it's just yeah. not during this episode, but right. just overall. What other kind of shit did this woman get into? Um, Luna was told that she had a baby face and she got mad because she wanted to be uh, a big, pretty much a badass. Yeah, heel. She wanted to be a yeah, heel. She wanted to be the heel. She wanted to be the ultimate of heels. Right, yeah. And um, now um, you know, they go back to Gangrel, David Heath. I'll get, you know, it doesn't matter what I, who it is. He stated that Mula had a lot of power over Luna, that Luna mm-hmm. was kind of not terrified of her, but she backed down to her. And apparently, and this was really messed up, uh, the story that they said that Mula had sent Luna to a guy out west to do some uh, photography. Right. So he said for $500, he would pay her $500 to take the photographs. Next thing you know, the guy attacks her and tries to rape her. I'm like, what the hell did you send her into, girl? I mean, this is ridiculous. Uh, she fought That's him crazy. off, um, and but the be- worst part is she's 16 at the time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is just insane. I mean, it, it, this is, and this was in the beginning of the episode. So you imagine how we're going, mm-hmm. how this is going to escalate through here. I mean, this is just really bad. Uh, the next wrestler they interviewed was a woman by the name of Kim Sachs. Her professional, she was a professional wrestler. Her wrestling name was Penelope Paradise. Oh, she had a bigger name to it, but who cares? She was just Penelope Paradise. She was trying to make herself out to be never, more than what she was. I think she was trying to sell her. Pro- she was trying to self-promote herself. I She's think, trying to put herself this. over. She's trying to pull a Hogan. <laughs> it's funny. His name comes up in this. Yeah, yeah I know. I know. That's Because <laughs> uh, Luna wanted to be uh, right. the next Hulk, Hulk Hogan, yeah. which uh-huh. was, I'm like, why do you want to bury people? Uh-huh. But anyway. October 1985, she makes her debut in CWF as a journalist and falls victim to the dark powers of Kevin Sullivan. Yeah. This guy is just batshit crazy wherever he went. I mean, and I heard some of the stuff that he did down there, and it was just... That was down in Tampa, right? Yeah. Tampa, before, before he came back to WCW and did that whole Dungeon of Doom because yeah. half of his cronies... <laughs> that he had for for that for the Dungeon of Doom came from there, especially that that big old guy that Hogan had to deal with. Um, so anyway, uh, she had, at this point now she shaved her head, put veins on her head, and because well, I think I think the uh, the angle was that um, he hit her right, he hit her in the head, and then she became Luna Vachon. Yeah, I think yeah. that's what the angle was. Either that or he overpowered her. It was one of them. I think, I think, he, I think, I think actually might have fucked her. I think, yeah, she knows mm-hmm. she hit her head. That I know. Or somehow her head got hit. No. Yeah. Well, that, that'll explain her lunacy. Um, even but, but the best part is they would say even behind the curtain, this is who she was. And they thought it was kind of odd. But then again, as they established later on, mental health wasn't something that they looked for back then, yeah. unfortunately. Um they were talking about how oh, Kim said that how, and I love how she put this. She said, "Yeah, it used to snow every day in the in Miami in the eighties." Yeah, and it, she said it was either quaaludes and coke or acid, and this girl was probably on all of it. Uh, she uh, Luna had also claimed that she was uh, that she was raped from the you now they had the problems with the family. Now I don't know nobody from the family rebutted any of this. So well, the father the, the father said that that no that nobody in his family would ever do that to her. Um, but it's yeah. not it's not clear who really who did what. They kind of specify. They kind of allude to the 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 aunt maybe doing something to her, but they never really. Yeah. They said assault because I think Gangro says yes assault, but then wasn't didn't get into details. Yeah, he described uh, the, the family as um, inappropriate family relations. That's how he put it. Yeah. So I don't I don't know. And she's not unfortunately. He did, he did say that she yeah. was abused by the aunt, though. Right. Yeah. Uh, probably not mentally, physically. Who knows? Right. Yeah. So. 
and um, she didn't want people to know, mm-hmm. you know, everything that was going on there. And then she had a, uh, I don't know when she gets diagnosed with a uh, bipolar disorder and schizophrenia. That's a, that's According to her son, that uh, she was studied since she was like two years old. Okay, yeah. For for all of it, for all schizophrenia, that, yeah. bipolar, depression. I mean, if you're being, if you if if you're in there at two, wow. I mean, yeah. And if they couldn't catch it, I mean, what? I know it wasn't a big thing back then, but if you're if you if you're taking a look at her and possibly trying to diagnose her for this. I don't understand how they didn't see it. I know. It. Then it was also part of her gimmick, too. The, the son mentioned that. Like, it's, a, it's yeah. a, it was also her gimmick. So was it real? Was it not? And he said it was real. Yeah, exactly. he did, yeah. yeah. So some of the wrestlers were like, yeah, we didn't know, but he knew. Right, right. So she said that she hated me. They hate, she hated being called Gertrude. And they referred, they said, like, with her every 10 minutes, like the change of the weather in Florida or here in Texas, um, that she'd have a different personality. Uh, she'd be Angel or Trudy or Luna. I mean, th- that right there should tell you that mm-hmm. she's bipolar schizophrenic. I mean, yeah. that that's that's a that's a given sign. Come on. Uh, the son says that she was chemically imbalanced, imbal- definitely bipolar. Day to day life would uh, um, they would call her Angel. She uh, she would speak with a childlike voice, and then all of a sudden she'd get a phone call. Something would piss her off, and here comes Luna for the rest yeah, of the she'll day. She'll spaz out, yeah. Oh my God, Gary. Yeah, imagine for him as a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, she actually, uh, Kim was talking about they got into a fight at a hotel. Um, well, even though they were supposed to fight that night in the ring, they got into an altercation in the in the room. Uh, Luna would make a joke by saying after the fight, "Oh, I better take my little blue pill." So. Most people wouldn't be like, yeah, that's not a joke. Take it. Yeah. Um, this his he now they go back to his, his son. He talks about the multiple stepdads. Yes. Oh boy, the first one was Dirty Dick Slater. Yeah, what a name. Yeah. <laughs> um, he didn't last too long. Um, th- this is actually right around the time that um, she divorced him. Now. Um, they talked about there was a car ride between because now she's managing the Blackhearts. It right. was Tom Nash, Gangrel, and she was the manager. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're in the car, and all of a sudden she just jumps out to the front seat, yelling at him, "Why don't you like me?" The Gangrel, ah! yeah, she's like, yeah, that Gangrel. She like, and the way he does too. it, yeah, the way he does it, I was like laughing. Why do you like me? Ah! All right, this is his like, impersonation <laughs> is spot on. It's pretty spot yeah, it's on. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so he bites. She bites him in the back. The, the fight escalates. I mean, it's all. It's all like. Well, yeah, because then they get into the ring later. Later on, they actually get into the ring, and then she bites him on the back. Yeah. And then and then he leaves a scar. But he said that they they were already like best friends before the scar even healed. And they both said to each other, "We are. We shouldn't date. We shouldn't do right, this." Right, yeah, right. you're right. We shouldn't do this. But they yeah. did it anyway. Mm-hmm. Um. And what's funny is now, uh, before they get together, Tom Nash actually marries her. So right, because apparently Tom Nash, two. Tom Nash was like in love with her, and yeah. And according to him, he accused David of being in relations with her while he was away, which broke up the marriage and the tag team. Yeah, so there was a huge falling out from this. Um, so now she marries David. He he had a uh, I think he, he said he had a steel cage match, and they married at midnight. Yeah, but then they but it, they got into a fight. He got into a fight with uh this guy Gangrel got into a a fight with what's his name before that before they broke up the uh the tag team. The Nash. Yeah, they, yeah, they got into a physical altercation, and uh, they didn't get his side of the story. Who knows what happened? But yeah, yeah. Then they ended up uh steel cage match, and then they get and the married. Midnight here go the yeah. nuptials. Instead of wedding rings, it's fang vampire bites. Yeah. Oh, jeez. I thought that was actually kind of cool, but at the same time, I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing that. Teach his own. Whatever, exactly. So now after all of this and everything she's been through, she finally got her break. April 4th, 1993, she debuts, and we all remember this, at WrestleMania 9. Coming out, beating the crap out of Sherry, uh, being in Shawn Michaels' corner. Um, and was also cool is she was one of the first females in a wrestling game because she was mm-hmm. in the WWF Raw game for Genesis. Oh, yeah. I had that game. I had it for Super Nintendo, but yeah, Remember I still game. have it. Still got it. Yeah. Still works. 
after all these years. No, no. His son said that they got the they got the system just to play. Uh, yeah, just 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 because Luna was he, in it. He probably had more relationship time with the game with her than. Um, yeah, because in real life, because they she, don't really see it like once or twice. Yeah, they don't really get into it. They don't even say who raised it. I don't think they say who actually grandmother. What was the well, grandmother? He said he lived. He said he lived with his, with his grandmother. Okay, okay, yeah. So and that um, and he, had a, and he had a brother too that they showed a picture of, but and they never talk about him. They never talk. Maybe he just didn't want to be any part of the show, so they just said, you know, we'll just kind of like, you know, not really discuss him. You know? Yeah, because I I actually had to pause for a second. And go wait, did I miss something? I'm like, yeah, I only yeah, they're only uh, talking about Van. I I see the photo of the other kid, and yeah, it's just like the one photo, and then they yeah. were done. And his son, her son looks. A lot like him, a lot like her. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, Van, you talking about? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. It's just, it's it's the probably the better thing that he became a culinary chef rather than pursue the family yeah, business. Yeah. It's just it, I think it's better off in this case. Um, because yeah, the, she lived in a '50s style trailer, um, and saw him once or twice a year with the group with the grueling WWE road trip. Yeah, she was even on the road, even yeah. on the independent scene. You know, you're constantly on the road, so she never saw him. Yeah. Um. One, it, it, when she was in WWE, now they had paired her. They talked about pairing her with Bam Bam Bigelow, and she rarely got in the ring, and this aggravated her. And. They, there was no division. I mean, there was an, an, five Med- to six women. That's it. Yeah, Medusa mentions that there was the, the division didn't even really exist. <sighs> of course, they had to bring her in. Yeah, Deborah Maselli. I, li- I like her. I like her. I like what she wanted to do for Luna. I'm gonna get to that in a second. Right. I really, I, I thought she should have did it just to try to piss Vince off because you know he would have made it null and void. Mm-hmm. But I just, I. I, and I'm thinking back. I'm like, wait a minute. I don't remember I like, ever being the champion. You know what I love? I love how she says, better known as Medusa. She doesn't even say no, Andre Blaze. Andre Blaze mentioned, right. no. Even though, even though she's talking about her time in WWF back mm-hmm. then, and she was Alundra Blaze, she doesn't even say that name. You got to love it. Yeah, because she made the worst mistake signing with them. But here's a newsflash. WCW didn't have a women's division either. That's true. Good so yeah. the only time she got really into the ring was AWA. Yeah. So, so she uh, Deborah went on to saying that how they um, they never got recognition, especially yeah. Luna. Uh, in Canada, this is what I was mentioning earlier. Medusa wanted to do Alundra Blaze wanted to do something for her. She wanted to drop the title and give it to Luna. Right, because she was from Canada and she figured, hey, you know what? Let me put her over in Canada. You put your dues where... in. You deserve it. Yeah. And even though it was scheduled that she was supposed to go over, she wanted to do this for her. And Luna kept saying, "Are you sure? Are yeah, you I, sure?" I like how she, how uh, how Medusa says, "She's like, I don't care. I'll get fired. Waiting to fire me. I don't care. I don't even want to be here anymore." Like, <laughs> which is true because what was it? Yeah. A few months down the road, she was out. Yeah. So she left. She took the belt, and we all know what she did. But yeah, she's like, "I don't care at this point. This shit sucks." You love it. You love it. Exactly. Yeah, I, I'll give her that. You know. But at the last minute, you know, Luna doesn't want to do it. You know, she can't, you know, she uh, she was going for the count. She opts not to do it. She I don't know if she was more scared or what. I, uh, I think I, it. I think she was worried because, you know, she didn't want to get not only did she not want to get her fired. She also didn't, probably didn't want want to get fired herself, probably for doing something like that. You know, and again, you know, Vince would have been like, oh, this don't count. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the title would have been stripped and the, whatever. Then he would have four people to fight for it, which was really true because this women division prior to the attitude era really was a joke. Mm-hmm. So by this point now, Luna was bonding with Sherry Martell, first person she sent to the hospital when she showed up. Yeah. Uh, mainly because they were both downgraded to valets or managers. Uh, yeah. so, she, so they both knew how it felt. And, and both could really wrestle. Mm-hmm. So why they were never able to put on a show during their feud, I don't know. I really don't. Yeah, so it was she, just, Sherry was a former champion, and Luna could wrestle. I mean, I don't know, man. Uh, they should have. They probably should have done something with that. Luna, Luna had talent in the ring. I'm not going to deny her that. Mm. So, in any event, um, they, uh, David Heat now uh, talks. Um, he he said that he never knew that she was taking pills at this point. Um, he was referring to one day Heyman Sherry, or I guess her and Sherry were. Uh, somewhere and Luna was asleep for like three days or something. And yeah, he said he, he didn't know anything about pills. Like, 
He said. Yeah, and he 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 approached Sherry about it, and there was a huge falling out between them. It didn't. He said it didn't go well. In what case? So um, they didn't really elaborate too much after that. Um, now Luna, they had a pre-recorded thing that Luna has said they sent her to rehab at this point for for drinking. This now, when, when I heard, when I saw this, I was really agitated because as soon as she checked into the rehab, they fired her. They said it was for her own good. I mean, that's almost that's just as bad as a FedEx termination. I mean, it's crazy. Um, Van says she always tried to kill herself. You know, he went to this thing like, now. There was always scars on her wrist, and he'd always ask, "Mom, why are you doing this? You know, stop." You know, she never elaborated on why, but pretty much. The, the round robin of disease and stuff that she was going through pretty much was her battle. Um, despite personal struggles, though, Luna is recommended to ECW now at this point by Nancy Sullivan, a.k.a. Woman. Woman, yeah. Um, she was actually called the Queen of Extreme in ECW. Um, they showed the 1995 Steel Cage match, and I remember this, of uh, Luna versus Stevie Richards, yeah. which she won, and she became the first woman to win an intergender match. Well, at least in ECW, anyway. Yeah, Gangrel said that she was like in her element over there, and uh, pretty much yes, because as ECW. psychotic as ECW is, she fits. She fit right in. in. She fit right in. Yeah, and she liked being like doing groundbreaking stuff, and mm -hmm. you know, so she. And, and they have a smaller fan base, <clears throat> and they really support and cherish everything ECW did. Mm -hmm. You had some diehard fans that would stand behind her no matter what. So, from there, she returned to the WWE in 1997. Um, but she was once again assigned as a valet, not as a wrestler. She was paired with Goldust during his transition as being the artist, formerly known as Goldust. Yeah. Um, from here, Luna was they talking about how Luna was to lose a high profile match to Sable. And this was at WrestleMania 14 in a mixed tag match. And Luna had said in the recording that according to Sable, I don't know how to take bumps. But, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to be the WWE champ, women's right, champion. Right, right. And, she's, and she's like, wait, what? And this tore Luna apart. Not only that, but she was told if she scratched her bruise sable during this match, she would be fired. Yeah. So, if you, so this, this is the reason why you never saw any real offense from Luna during this match. Yeah. And that, that's like no pressure, by the way. And it was shortly after that match that Sonny had gone up to her and was trying to console her, and she threw her into a, a crate or something, and it looked like she was hitting her, and she's yelling out to anybody that was listening, I'm not hitting her in the face, I'm not hitting her in the face. She's afraid, again, if you hit Sable and uh, Sonny in the right, face right. and mess her up, she'll be fired. Well, they were explaining how that she was upset that she did such a good job putting Sable over, making Sable look good, yes. and she goes backstage. You know, they show they have flowers and they're like, oh, you did such a great job. And they weren't even they didn't even look at her. They were talking just directly to Sable. To Sable. And then I, I guess she told McFoley, I think it was. Yeah. How well, upset that she move. was like, she's like, oh, they don't appreciate what I'm doing here or whatever. And then and the she thing, thought that the accolation that uh, Vince was given was for her and it wasn't. Right. That's and really, that's and, fucked up. Right. And, and the, the thing with the thing with Sonny was that Sonny went over there harmlessly and was like just trying to tell her like, oh, you know, it's going to be all right. And then she just like flipped out on her. Yeah. I'm not hitting her. I'm not hitting right, her. Right. She's upset. She's... I mean, I don't blame her for a frustration. Right, no, no, you, you, did, you, did, you did everything you could during the match. It still it was still was a, it was a decent match. You, you yeah. did everything, you know, and no recognition from you whatsoever for what you did. That's real. That's 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 crap. And she also said that uh, that um, nobody accepted her either. So it was like she was the outcast. Mm -hmm. Still in WWE at this yeah. point. Um, now, they you remember the, the they they showed the contest that they had. I think it was a bikini contest. Mm -hmm. um, I know they showed a, a skit from the Royal Rumble 2000. I'm not quite sure. I don't remember if this what if this was at the Royal Rumble 2000 or not, where she refused to take her top off, which they wanted her to do, and because she refused. Um, on top of that, besides a number of backstage incidents, they released her for the final times. Like they couldn't take it anymore. Yeah. Well, they explained how during, you know, it was during the attitude era that she came back and everything was very sexualized. 
-hmm. and how you know she was upset because she's like well you know you made me look you made me look ugly or you wanted me to look ugly and now i'm doing this sexual stuff so i don't want to take my top off and the 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 son mentioned how you know it, it couldn't have felt good for her she's standing next to these models and mm -hmm. her gimmick is that she's this you know bizarre um I can understand where she's coming from because yeah, I mean she's course. in the ring with uh, with Sable with the Sable cat and all these. You know. I mean, come on. Yeah, I know this. You know. I, I don't. I don't think she should have been put in that gimmick. Or no, 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 no. I don't. This is not for her. It just she's... made her look. It just made her look bad. Just made her look bad. You know. And because of this, among like I said, amongst other things, she gets her release for the last time. It's like Vince had it, but I don't know. Um. What was funny was then Gangrel was talking about how he comes home, he sees she's in the bedroom, she's she's writing out in cocaine, F you, Vince. Yeah. And I, I, I'm laughing because I'm like, okay, snort that shit up then if you're going. What a, I mean, damn. Yeah. <laughs> he said on it, and th this is another thing that, that, that blew my mind. He said on an easygoing night, it would be a couple of eight balls, 10 hits of ecstasy. I don't know. She survived. She even survived. I don't know one. either. Because they, they talked about in the beginning of the show something like a hundred pills a day. Yeah. How are you still how are you still breathing? Yeah. I, I don't understand that. Now yeah. the, the eight balls and the ecstasy alone, I mean, my God. He said that by this point, this is what this is what drove them apart. Because he couldn't take it anymore. Because she wouldn't and, stop. Yeah, he explained no. how she like it was just she just would not stop. It was never enough. And he was telling her, like, all right, calm down. Like and Medusa was telling him this was the best thing to do. You got to do this to save yourself, if anything. Um, so he he went to the West Coast. He was saying, he said, getting remarried, not such a good idea to the whole thing. Yes, that's not a good idea. Well, at least not, don't tell her, but whatever. Um, another uh, downhill slide for her was Luna showing up to Kim's house with a gun. She was all frantic and crazy, and now Kim has to push her away because she's like, I got kids. She can't do this. You know, what's going on here? She couldn't make up, make sense of what she was saying, what she was doing, why she had the gun, was somebody right, chasing right. her. I mean, it, this is just, like, complete sad stuff here we're, we're dealing with at this point. Um, towards the end, she didn't talk to her son much, which had to be, I don't know if that was on his end or hers. I think it was more on her end because he said that, she was in Florida. He was in Texas. She was kind of she was hanging out with bikers. Yeah. Um, outlaw. He said outlaw, yeah, outlaw bikers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not just bikers. Outlaw bikers. Outlaw bikers. <laughs> no, that makes it all better, that Luna. Mm -hmm. Um, and then they they go on to. He said he didn't know if her the, her death was overdose or she choked or both. Or they, there was there was never clear on August twenty seventh, two thousand ten. And Luna was found dead. Yeah, you you feel bad for him because he says it doesn't even matter to me. She's gone, so yeah, doesn't matter. And he said that uh, she didn't even meet her granddaughter, his his daughter, yeah. mm -hmm. and he said that maybe she felt like she wasn't good enough. Yeah, and I mean, I don't have a whole lot of I don't have any experience with this. I'm not a, a doctor, so I don't know how to how do you tell somebody like that unless it comes from him that you are, you are her grandmother. You are perfect for her. Get over here and see her. Yeah. Like, I mean, I don't, I don't know how you, how you I don't know, I don't do know. something like that. Like if I'm saying it right, if I'm saying it at all, like, I don't know how you help somebody like that. And tragic. It's, just, it, it's sad. Tragic, tragic story. This one, one of the, the definite top few, is, yeah. you know, hers and Canyons. Definitely. Yeah, Absolutely. Um, uh, what's coming up next week on Dark Side? The XPW. Yeah, XPW. Oh my god! I, all I saw was a finger being getting cut off. Good stuff. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I saw that they had like good, the good the stuff. The clip. That should be interesting. So. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Wrestling and porn, right? Something like that. Two of my favorite things as a teenager. Yeah. <laughs> all right, you guys. So uh, make sure to tune in next time and like, comment, share, subscribe, and we'll see you guys soon. Take care.